Hey everyone, we're back. What a great day this has been here for us at the Open Source Summit, Linux Foundation Open Source Summit here in Austin. And I couldn't think of a better person to end our day with than my friend Stephen Chin. Stephen is, of course, with JFrog. He has a lot of hats he wears over there. But we're going to talk today specifically about an open source project that Stephen has been shepherding. Is that a good word? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's my bad idea, so okay. I take responsibility so, for it. Good or bad, he's taking responsibility, and that's not a bad thing. The name of the project is on his shirt here. It's called Persia, so it's not Persia, it's Persia. And and Stephen, well, let's start that. What what's Persia about? So I, I I think the question is why Persia. Why, well, why? before we get to why Persia, I think it's what Persia. Okay, let's, let's do what and we'll quickly part Go into, into why. why. So what, what we're building with Persia is we're building a decentralized package repository that will, will essentially give you all the capabilities you're used to getting from, um, from Docker Hub, from Maven Central, from PyPy, from NPM, but in a vendor neutral, um, decentralized infrastructure, um, where also you can rely upon it having a very high level of security because we're building everything from source, which we provide to, to the end users. I love this idea. Why did it take so long? Um, it, it's a hard problem. <laughs> yeah, no, it is a hard problem, and you're right. But we've built plenty of repositories. Yeah, so so I think one of the things I think we 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 all know this from working in DevOps and the the um, repository spaces. There are dozens of different integrations with upstream languages, technologies, package managers, and um, they they all they're they're very specific to the language. They have different benefits. They have different ways of approaching immutability, versioning, um, how you handle conflicts with upstream dependencies. And while that's that's great that we have all this you know unique infrastructure, it makes it very hard to have a, a high level of security to evolve the ecosystem. And frankly, a lot of the package managers, which have been around for a long time, suffer from some inherent security risks, which you use just by using them in the central repositories which they rely upon. So I've got two comments, thoughts that I'd like your thoughts on on this. Number one, I've wondered for a long time why we wouldn't have one repo to rule them all. Why do we need this United Nations of repos for every damn language? Even, with all due respect, even within JFrog, every year I go to Swamp Up or, or one of the J, and then we, oh, we're just announcing Artifactory for Go, Artifactory for this language, Artifactory. Why can't we have one repository to rule them all? Yeah, so I think I think it's a it's an interesting problem. So, um, it, for example, Artifactory, one of the things which we're known for is being the Switzerland of DevOps. Yep. So Artifactory speaks every repository manager, every different format. There's over 30 different formats. We just announced binary Swift protocol yeah. support. Sorry. It's v it's very very hard work to to build something which integrates across different languages, different ecosystems, uh, and to, to understand all these different domains and do it well. And I think that's one of the problems we're trying to solve with Percy. It's not just a JFrog project. We're collaborating with Docker. We're collaborating with Oracle. We're collaborating with Deploy Hub and FutureWay and Huawei. So we have a, a, wi and a, growing, a wide and growing set of companies which are contributing to the project. And we all have our own goals in terms of like languages, ecosystems, platforms, um, secure build technologies we're bringing to the table. But I think when, when you, we do this together as companies and we build a, a decentralized infrastructure on technologies which are next generation, Web 3.0 and scalable, then this really helps us to, to solve the problem and to fundamentally secure this critical piece of infrastructure for open source. So look, when I hear you talking about multiple companies being involved. To me, this is crying out for a foundation. So what, what's what been the thought around making Paris your part of a foundation? Yeah, so I think that obviously when you have an open source project like this, we, we want it to be a full open source stack. We want it to be vendor neutral. 
And um, a great place for this is the, the Linux Foundation in general. I mean, Linux mm -hmm. Foundation does a great job of this. You can Agreed. see this with the number of vendors involved in CNCF, involved in all the other efforts which they have. And I think where, where we were kind of landing with Persia is a big part of our focus and like the current phase two infrastructure we're building is this verified build infrastructure to build from source to binaries. It's sitting on top of Tekton, it's sitting on top of CD events, it's using a bunch of the technologies which are part of the CD foundation. And um, as um, a project, we're thinking it's really good alignment with the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Okay. And we actually, just this morning, we chatted with the Technical Oversight Committee, um, got a really good response from them, and I think that that's progressing well, and hopefully we'll be part of a Vendor Neutral Foundation soon to further advance the project, because I think that gives the, this um, neutrality, which we need to become a, a standard. Absolutely, that's great news. You know, look, you and I, Stephen, talk all the time, right? CD Foundation is it's about two years old now. And it went through a time where, you know, uh, the initial leadership moved on. They recently put a new uh, uh, chair in and, and some new board members. Mm -hmm. And it seems to have revitalized CDF. And, and look, it's part of the Linux Foundation, right? So, you, you, ha you know, you Yeah, really no, I, I, I mean, the CD Foundation fundamentally has some really, really strong projects. Spinger, Tekton, Jenkins. Absolutely. Um, the, with the new leadership, Fatih is joining as the general manager. Right. Um, also, I'm the chair of the governing board. There's oh, okay. a bunch of new folks coming in to the marketing committee and proposing projects. So I think this is this is kind of like a renaissance of the CD Foundation, where it's going yep. through another transformation. And the the new projects coming in are, are broadening the portfolio from being pure continuous delivery technologies to bridging out to security, to observability, everything you would need to build an end-to-end -end DevOps platform entirely on open source technologies. Love it. I, I like there's another reason. I, I think at the end of the day, from how you're describing Persia, it's not just about security. It really is about how do we how do we decentralize our. Re you know, I, I digress, but I went up to see Linus's uh, mm -hmm. uh, keynote this morning. And one of the things I, I guess I knew but I didn't know was that not only did he start uh, Linux, right? Create a Linux, but he created Git, right? And you, it's pretty cool when you think about it. And um, it, 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 I'm, the idea of having a decentralized repo like this, I don't know if it was something he envisioned when they did Git all those years ago or not, but I, it's so much, there's so much that can be done there. Yeah. And it could be set free to, you know, you could set these repos free to some level. No, no, I think, I think a good parallel to that is, um, like, one of the ways which I've described people, the, the, the level of change and innovation going into Persia mm -hmm. is it's, it's essentially Git for binaries. Right. We're, we're building the, the decentralized um, Switzerland of binaries so that now you can get all of your secure... Um, verified packages from this decentralized infrastructure. And something else which um, um, Linus Torvald said in his keynote this morning as well, was that they're seriously looking at Rust, not really? only for building device drivers, but for doing some Linux kernel development. And we, we made the same assessment when we started the Persia project and are actually building the entire project in Rust because it gives you we believe today the best high performance um, verifiable language where you you can you can have a higher level of security guarantee on the code you're writing than if you built it in for example like C C plus yeah, yeah. Go and other technologies. Well, not, well, look, today's choices around languages are nearly infinite. Today, Rust may look like a really good one. Five years from now, three years from now, something cool comes out, and you kick yourself and say, oh, I wish I could port it to that. You, you know, you say that, but most languages we're using today have been around for 20 plus years, so. <laughs> you think so, really? Well, yeah, most languages we're using, but 
when you, it, it's the, when like you the look compiler at the, technology and the tool chain and like getting things to the level where you can build production grade software is a, it's it's a decade of investment on any of the languages yes. we're using today and the the languages people are most reliant on like python java are old JavaScript, no, no doubt are, i've been around for yeah. a long time um but it does seem like every graduate student going for their PhD designs their own language or something. <laughs> it's a whole other story. I want to, I want to, so first of all, I want to wish you a lot of luck with Persia. When do you, no pressure, but when do you think we might hear uh, some news on this CD foundation? And Yeah, so I mean, in terms of the project, you can already go and try it. Mm -hmm. Persia.io, the peer-to-peer -peer system is entirely functional. We have a backing um, authorized server, which will give you, with our partner Docker, official Docker images off the Persia network. Oh, great. Which is awesome. Um, we're working with the CD Foundation to um, apply for incubating status. So we're very hopeful, but of course, you know, we, we want to go through the right technical vetting process there. And I think that um, the, the new stuff I mentioned, kind of this phase two work on our verified build infrastructure should be ready by the end of the year. So we're, we're moving Very aggressively, cool. but doing it in a collaborative um, Well, by format. the end of the year, I mean, like six months is, yeah. is not a lot. All right, let me switch gears with you. So I've been listening all day to people talk about supply, software supply chain security. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I just wonder why we haven't put more emphasis on the repo organizers to clamp down on knowingly out of date insecure vulnerable uh, artifacts or code or, or whatever that their repo contains right if you know i get that there's a freedom issue here right if someone wants to use this old version because they have a good reason for using it knowing of the insecurities in mm -hmm. it so be it but why aren't we doing a better job of warning people that hey don't use this unless you have a really good reason okay so i, I think that first of all it, this is a hard problem and there, it is there is a lot of discussion efforts going into it and i i i think you can categorize the type of work going into it into three buckets so um one set of work is going into shoring up the the current central repositories mm -hmm. and there's a there's a great working group that's part of open ssf which is dedicated towards this um they they have a plan which both companies are currently investing in which requires some funding to improve um, for example signatures of people submitting to central repositories um, having um, like more secure namespacing and verification of domains. And there's a whole bunch of things which are either inconsistently or, or not well applied from a security standard for central repositories. Um, the, the second class of things which I think is important for this is um, security disclosures. So um, different security research firms, and we've been doing this a lot from our security research team at JFrog, both research vulnerabilities, they disclose vulnerabilities first to the, the person who's responsible or, or owns the asset which is vulnerable. So in a lot of our recent disclosures have been um, basically malware or um, problems in central repositories. We, we found a, um, an exploit um, targeted at Azure developers, which was in NPM, where um, they specifically checked in packages with the Azure namespace left off. It's essentially a typo squatting attack. Yep. They got a lot of hits on this and we reported it and had them pulled before it became an issue. But like you need vulnerability research teams who are looking for this and helping to remediate it. And I think that the third one, getting back to the Persia project is, um, frankly, we, we need a next generation infrastructure which is, yeah. Secure by default. I, I don't think the repos were built for that particular. Yeah. So, so the fundamental mission. the fundamental table stakes are: Do you have secure validation? Are you building from source, and and can you verify and build a build materials off of it? And um, that that's not true today of all the central repositories. Agreed. Hey, man, we're about out of time. Is there anything we missed on this? 
No, no, I mean, this, is, this has been a great conversation. I mean, I've been enjoying open, the Open Source Summit here yeah. um, in Austin. And I would say that for folks watching, you know, join us out here next year because this is an Absolutely. amazing event. Just the networking, the interactions. It's the worth sessions it. are great, too. Yeah. I, I'll be on it. You know, the ones I've been able to jump in on. But I'll also just mention that it is tomorrow and Thursday and there is a virtual they're, they're uh, yeah absolutely you know streaming this virtual you can check that out too as I've mentioned earlier anyway Stephen thank you so much quick shout out also uh, next month yeah, it's next month yeah, yeah. Yala DevOps July in Tel Aviv July 18th, 18th. see you in we Tel will Aviv. be there I think we're going to be doing <laughs> our thing there actually I'm on a panel there but we're also broadcasting and uh, hope to see you there